sense. You're right, Ash. Elephants need water, too. No, Ellie Pants, Ellie Pants! Wow! So cool! Look at their trunks! They're amazing! They use them to breathe, to pick things up, drink water. Water! Elephants can find places with water and dig them out. It helps them and other animals. Where are other animals? Very thirsty animals. Why don't we follow this herd to wherever they go for water? Great idea, Gorby. But we don't want to disturb them. If we get too close, we may scare them away like before. Not a problem. Introducing the Bolo Elephant! Wow! Cool. Did I think we're an elephant? I think so, Corby. Way to go, Willow. Look at that! They're using their trunks to greet each other. It sounds like a trumpet. The little ones must be babies. Look how close they stay to their mothers. The babies are called calves. They stay close to their mothers for protection and to learn everything they need to know to live on the savanna. Elephants are very social creatures, and their herds are their <coughs> family. <coughs> oh boy, I'm still totally parched. So it's ready. I hope these elephants find water soon. They found it! Looks like they're thirsty. You think it's our turn to drink some water yet? I'm <coughs> parched, we know. Let's just make sure the elephants had enough water first. I think they're done. Finally! Now filtering water. Water is now safe to drink. Ah, mm, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks, Corey, for the great idea. Not only did we find water to drink, we also got to be part of the herd. I don't know who is thirsty or Chester or Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of all, we should be thanking the elephants for leading us here. <laughs> that means thank you. Wait, if they're such fast runners, how come they're just laying around? Cheetahs don't run for fun. They run to hunt animals for food. So, if we want to see it run, guess we should find something cheetahs run after, like gazelles. There's one. I think it's creeping up on its prey. But wait, I don't see any prey. It's watching and waiting for the right time to pounce. Oh, look over there. Whoa. A gazelle. Wow, look at it go. The cheetah is fast. But so are the gazelles. I think I got the cheetah's whole run. Let's check out the footage in slow motion. The cheetah picks up speed so quickly, and it accelerates just like I did. Look at its leaping strides. Its claws help it grip the ground, so that its feet don't slip around when it runs. It says here that the cheetah's claws stay out all the time. They never fully retract. It's the only cat that does that. Let's see what the speed tracker says about how fast it's going. It was running as fast as a car driving on a highway. Zoom! Now that is fast. Cheetahs are amazing runners. Plus, I like their faces. Those black marks under their eyes are cool. Those markings are called teardrops. They help keep the sun from glaring in their eyes so they can see where they're going. You know, I think I'm ready to try another run. I put black under my eyes to block out the sun's glare. 
I'm stretching so that I can take long strides. And my shoes have spikes like claws, so that I won't slip. Ready? Time to run like a cheetah. Go! Cheetah Lily! your fastest time ever! Way to go, Lily! Thanks, Willow. Thanks a lot for helping me learn to run faster, Cheetah, old buddy. And now I'm gonna do something else that cheetahs do. What's that? Lay down. <sighs> but all zebras have black and white stripes, Nash. Of course, there's more than one species of zebra. Chester, maybe that's it! It turns out there are three different kinds of zebras. And each kind of zebra has different stripes. Take a look, Nash. Nope, long stripes. Well, there's this one. Nah, -uh. Here's the third one, the plain zebra. That looks like one we've seen around here. What do you say? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But wait, what is it, Lily? We still don't know how to pick out Natch's zebra from all the other zebras around here. Yes, but it also says that every individual zebra has a unique pattern of stripes. So you can tell them apart. But we don't know what that zebra looks like. Hmm. Hail. <gasps> Natch's selfie with the zebra. We'll totally be able to see its stripes now. Audrey, could you scan for zebra herds? Scanning, scanning. I have detected a few herds of zebra directly ahead. All yes. right, then let's go! Wow, so many zebras. And we have to find just the right set of stripes. I'm having an engineering moment. Behold, the polo zebra matcher. It should be able to compare the stripe pattern of Nash's zebra to any other zebra. Yay! Is it here? Hmm, it doesn't look like Nash's zebra is in this herd. Well, I guess we'll keep looking then. Let's go! It's not in this herd, or this one. Nope, Nash's zebra isn't in this herd either. I wonder why zebras even have stripes. <gasps> when they move, their stripes make it hard to tell where one zebra starts and another one ends. So it would be hard for predators too. That must be why they have stripes, for protection. My zebra! <laughs> scanning, scanning. It's a match! That's Nash's zebra! I think Nash already knew that. Hello! Yeah. Yeah. Scientists think their stripes also confuse bugs and keep them from being bitten. <sighs> I wish I had stripes. Another hypothesis! What's that? A hypothesis is what you think might be the answer to a question. In this case, why ostriches put their heads in the sand. They might do it because they're scared, but there might be another reason. Well, my hypothesis is that they do it to hide from predators, from animals that want to eat them. But that leaves their whole body sticking out unprotected. Yeah, and if its head is in the ground, it won't be able to see a predator coming. Well, that might make them pretty silly, but you never know. So let's go find out why ostriches bury their heads in the sand. Let's find out what those ostriches are doing. Come on. Shh, we don't want them to run away. Right, and I have just the thing to help us get really close to them. <gasps> they're not real. I made them. They're hollow inside, so they're easy to carry. We can hide behind them and get closer to the ostriches. Wow, everybody, hurry up. Shh. Shh, quiet, everybody. There they are. Shh. Oh, hey, oh, gosh. Gosh. Ah. ah, come on. 
Let's try to get closer. Wow, they're even bigger close up. You know, we haven't seen any ostriches stick their head in the sand yet. Wait, I think that one is. But there haven't been any loud noises, and there aren't any predators around here. Those were two of the things we thought. So maybe that's not it. But it could still be hot. Or itchy. Look, there goes another one. Putting its head in the sand. Is it? I can't see what it's doing. I think we should try to get closer. <gasps> Ginormous eggs. <gasps> the eggs. Wow. Ooh. Those are definitely the biggest eggs in the world. That must be its nest. Look, it's turning the eggs with its beak. That's why it keeps lowering its head. They're not sticking their heads in the sand at all. They're sticking their heads in their nests. We are a hole in the ground. We figured it out. Their necks are so long and their heads are so small that when they bend down, it just looks like they're sticking their head in the sand. And now we know because we investigated for ourselves. And now I know something about ostriches. We all do. Nash, watch uh. out. Whoa! Nash! Shh! Ostriches! <laughs> it's hot. I wish I'd brought my hat. Here! My hat! You brought it in your backpack? Mm-hmm. Wow, thanks, Nash. High five, buddy. Whoa! Oops. <clears throat> How about I carry that for a bit? <sighs> I'm so hot. Whew. I'm sweaty. I'm hot and sweaty. Oh, I wish I brought some water. Ah! Water! Wawa, Wawa. For everybody. Thanks, Nash. Maybe bringing that backpack wasn't such a bad idea. Actually, it's turning out to be a really great idea. Hey, look! Rhinos? They're still a little far. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nash. Yup. Let's go. Don't forget the backpack. I got it, buddy. I'll help. <gasps> Rhinos! We found them! Boy, they're big. One of the biggest land animals. Elephants are the biggest. Rhinos are so big that nothing around here eats them. Uh, what's up with those little birds? It looks like they're pecking at the rhinos' backs. It's eating bugs. I think you're right, Nash. The birds are picking bugs off the rhinos and eating them. I've heard of them. They're called oxpeckers. They help the rhinos by keeping them free of bugs. And the rhinos help the oxpeckers by giving them a source of food. No wonder the rhinos let the oxpeckers peck them. They're both getting something they need. Just like Nash helped us out today. Yeah, we never would have made it to see the rhinos without Nash and his backpack. And Nash would have never made it here with his backpack without everyone helping to carry it. I wonder what else he's got in there. <laughs> Whoa! Stuff! Teddy, bouncy ball, helmet, socks, book, zippers. My stuff! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better help Nash get all of his stuff back into his backpack and get it all the way back to the polo mobile. Right, another hot, sweaty, thirsty hike to right over there. We barely left the polo mobile. Oh, you're <laughs> right. Look, okay, got it. That doesn't look right. Huh. Nash! Give them a heads up. Right. <gasps> Is that Marco? 
Right. Ah, uh, Nash, Nash, let's go this way. Ah. Phew, that was close. Meerkats! There are a lot of them. Several meerkats can live in one burrow, but the whole group can be as many as 40. Lots of meerkats. Their burrows are connected by underground tunnels. Look. Babies! Right. They all work together to take care of their young and to get food for everyone. You mean 40 breakfasts, 40 lunches, and 40 dinners every day? Yeah. They hunt small rodents, lizards, insects, even poisonous scorpions. But they eat fruit, too. Look, they're all standing with their backs to each other around the burrow. They guard their burrows to protect them from predators. Ooh. To keep their babies safe? I think so. And when something comes around, they give each other the heads up to let all the other meerkats know that something is coming. so much. We thought you could use... 